This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. At last Aunt Hortensia and I have arrived in Venice after a long, sweaty, smoky and exceedingly uncomfortable train journey. Aunt Hortensia does not believe in wasting money and declared that sleeping berths on a train ride are completely useless as the cars stop, start and shake so much that sleep is impossible. So we sat up all the way from Boulogne on the French coast, through France, then Switzerland, and into Italy. By day it was awfully hot. One could not open the windows as smoke and cinders would blow in from the engine. And during the night there was a man opposite me who snored loudly, as well as his wife, who stank of garlic and body odor. I know I shouldn't be complaining. I am fully aware of how awfully lucky I am at being taken to Italy for my eighteenth birthday. The girls in my form at school were most envious. All that is behind us now. We are here. We came out of the Santa Lucia train station and stood at the top of a flight of steps. Echo il canal grande, Aunt Hortensia said in dramatic fashion, spreading out her arms as if she was on stage and had created the scene for my benefit. My Italian was limited to please, thank you, and good day, but I understood that this was the Grand Canal. Only it didn't look very grand. It was wide, to be sure, but the buildings on the other side were rather ordinary, and it looked dirty, too. The odor that greeted my nostrils was not particularly appetizing. It was a watery sort of smell, with a hint of fish and decay. I didn't have much of a chance to study my surroundings, however, as we were immediately besieged by porters. It was a little alarming to have men fighting over us in a strange language, snatching at our bags and trying to bundle us into a gondola whether we wanted one or not. But, as Aunt Hortensia confessed, we had no alternative. We could not have managed all that luggage on one of the water buses they call Vaporetti. Of course, I was thrilled to be in a gondola even though the gondolier was not a handsome young Italian who sang love songs, but rather a grim-faced man with a paunch. As we came around a bend, the Grand Canal became incredibly grand. On either side of us were amazing palaces, marble-coated or in shades of rich pink with arched Moorish windows. They appeared to float on the water in a way that was quite surreal. I wanted to get out my sketchbook right away. It was lucky that I didn't, as the amount of traffic on the canal made the boat rock alarmingly. The gondolier muttered what must have been Italian swear words. We were moving along quite nicely for a boat rowed with one oar, but the canal seemed awfully long. Echo il ponte di Rialto, Aunt Hortensia exclaimed, pointing at a bridge that crossed the canal ahead of us, rising up in a great arch as if suspended by magic. It appeared to have some sort of building on it, because a row of windows winked in the afternoon sunshine as we approached. I wondered if Aunt H. intended to speak in only that language from now on. If so, conversation was liable to be rather one-sided. However, this fear was dispelled, as she now produced her Baedeker and began to inform me about each building we passed. On your left, the Palazzo Barzitza. Note the thirteenth-century facades. And that large building is the Palazzo Mocanigo, where Lord Byron once stayed. This continued until an overcrowded vaporetto pulled out from its jetty. Our boat rocked again, and she almost dropped the book into the murky depths. Just as I began feeling a bit queasy, another bridge came into sight, this one a more flimsy iron footbridge that spanned the canal at a greater height. I expected Aunt H. to say Echo Ponte something or other, but instead she said, Ah, the Academia Bridge. Now we are almost at our destination. That's good. I was beginning to feel rather seasick. You mean canal sick, don't you? I asked, and she actually smiled. Over on that side is the Academia, that white marble building beside the bridge. If you were studying art in Italy, this is where you would want to go. La Accademia di Belle Arti, the Academy of Fine Arts, and it houses the finest collection of Venetian paintings, too. We shall definitely want to see it.